Hello. In this video, I am going to show you how to conduct a t-test for independent samples. t-test for independent samples. I will show how to do it using the individual computations, and then I will show you how to do it using the built-in t-test tool in the data analysis add-in in Excel 365. So here we have data for Coke and data for Pepsi. I wanted to make sure that you understood they didn't have to be the same sample size. So even though I originally had 36 values for each data set, I took away three of them from Pepsi. So you can see that they don't have to be the same size because these are not matched pairs. They are independent samples. Now, we want to test the claim that the mean volume of Coke is less than the mean volume of Pepsi. So the claim here is that the mean volume of Coke, which I'll call mean one, is less than the mean volume of Pepsi, which I'll call mean two. So the null hypothesis is that they are equal, mean one equals mean two, and the alternative is an inequality, so it'll be the same as the claim. I use my favorite alpha, 0.025. So to do this test, what we need are several things, and I'll show you how to do them individually, and then I'll show you how to do it where you don't have to do anything individually. So let's just say you did not have the data analysis tool added. So what do you need? Well, you would need the me sample means and sample variances for each. Sample means and sample variances for each. So we need the sample mean for the Coke and the sample mean for the Pepsi. We'll need the sample variance for Coke and the sample variance for Pepsi, as well as their sample sizes. So I guess we can do this sample size Coke, sample size Pepsi, sample size for Coke. Notice this first cell is a label, so we have to subtract one from however many cells were here. We're at 37, so that means there are 36 values for Coke. So the sample size for Coke, 36. For Pepsi, I took a few away because I wanted to show you they did not have to be the same sample size. So that would be 33 for Pepsi. Sample mean, we will compute doing the average. So the average for Coke, just going to highlight all the data. Excel will ignore any cell that does not contain new numbers, numerical values. Okay, there we go. N1 to N37. Sample mean for Pepsi, we use average again, equals, right, and highlight everything for Pepsi. Oh, shoot, what just happened here? That's okay. Didn't get it all the way. Boom. Is that it? Still got a few more. So let me bring it down. There we go. Okay, so it is A101 to 034. All right, 12.29. Notice okay. that Coke is has a smaller volume than Pepsi. Not a whole lot smaller, but it is there. And the variance, var dot s, because it's a sample variance. Whoops.
So the sample variance for Coke, close parenthesis, enter, sample variance for Pepsi, Close parentheses, enter. We already got our sample sizes. All right, now when we do this, you can think of your sample statistic as being the difference between the two means. So Coke minus Pepsi is our sample statistic. But now we need a test statistic. And our test statistic is T stat. We've seen this before. T stat is the sample statistic minus the assumed value from the null hypothesis. Well, what is that? Well, maybe I better discuss that first. So notice here, our sample statistic is the difference. We can write these in terms of the difference. So we could write the claim as the difference mean one minus mean two is less than zero, right? If mean one is less than mean two, then the difference would be less than zero, which means then that the mean difference would be assumed to be zero. If they are equal, the means are equal, then their differences are zero. And we already know that H1 will be the same as the claim when it's an inequality. So here, when we do it about differences, so that our sample statistic here, remember that is sample mean one minus sample mean two, all right? Everything's in terms of differences. So our test statistic, which is always sample statistic minus assumed value, the assumed value is zero. But we need to divide that by the standard error, which I have not computed yet. So let's do that. Forgot to compute that. So I'm going to actually move this down. And let's find the standard error. So the standard error here has a more complicated formula because we have two samples. It's going to be a square root. I don't want to put the equals there, I'm writing the formula. It's the square root of the first variance divided by the first sample size plus the second variance divided by the second sample size. So we're going to go equals square root first variance divided by first sample size plus second variance divided by, I went to the wrong thing, so let's go back, second variance divided by second sample size. So first variance divided by first sample size, second variance divided by second sample size, 0 0.02485. Now we're ready for our test statistic because that is always sample statistic minus assumed value from the null hypothesis divided by standard error. So what we have here is sample statistic 
minus value from the null hypothesis divided by a standard error. So here's our test statistic, our t stat, right there. We're going to use that to find the p-value. But before I do that, whenever we're using a t-stat, we're going to need a degrees of freedom. And the degrees of freedom here, we're going to make it easy on ourselves. And we're going to say that it's one less than the smaller sample size. One less than the smaller sample size. And our smaller sample size is 33. So what we're looking at then is we're going to use degrees of freedom of 32. right? Degrees of three, freedom of 32 just to make this simpler. If you were to look this up, say Google it, or some textbooks have the formula, it, it's, a, it's a messy formula. And if you're doing this by hand, we'll just be conservative, save ourselves some time, and use the smaller sample size to find the degrees of freedom. And now we're ready to do the p-value. So the p-value, we're doing a left tail test. So this will just be a t dot dist. X is our sample stat, I should say our test statistic, which is the T stat, comma, degrees of freedom, and then cumulative is always true when we're finding probabilities here, p-values. And so we see this small p-value, which makes sense because this is a really far t-stat, very far, almost four standard de errors from the middle, more than three and a half standard errors from the mean. So very small p-value. So we see our p-value here is less than alpha, definitely. And whenever the p-value is less than alpha, we will reject the null hypothesis and support the alternative hypothesis. So even using a conservative degrees of freedom, we are still supporting the alternative hypothesis. So the sample data support the claim that the population mean, and this is volume, of Coke is less than the population mean volume of Pepsi. And this basically says that the difference between the sample means is statistically significant, not likely due to random sampling error. So this is how you would do the test if you had no data analysis add-in to use the tools from. However, you could do this more quickly if you have the tools. So if you have the data analysis add-in and can use the tool, then that will give you your p-value, which is really the main thing you're going to need, your p-value. All right. It will also give you a test, uh, you know, sample statistic, standard error test statistic. But it uses a different degrees of freedom because it's being more complicated. So things will come out a little bit differently. The numbers will be a little bit different. Let me go ahead and unhighlight that. So what we are going to do now is we are going to use the t-test for two samples assuming unequal variances. There's a test that assumes equal variances, which would simplify computations considerably if you had to do things by hand and not even use a computer. But that is not a good assumption, and there's no need to use it when you're using technology. So we're going to do a t-test assuming unequal variances. I'm going to highlight this. And so this is the data analysis tool we're going to want to use 
two samples assuming unequal variances. Of course, we are going to have the same setup. So I am going to come down here. And then our alpha. So you still have to set that up and you're still going to need to write your conclusion. But let's now do the t-test, two samples assuming unequal variances. So you would go to data and to your data analysis tool, which is on the far right. And you're going to go down here now, t-test, two sample assuming unequal variances. Okay, so our first variable input will be the Coke. Our second variable input is our Pepsi. Hypothesized mean difference. Remember, that's what's in the null hypothesis. The hypothesized mean difference is zero. I have labels in my input because the first row is labels. I don't actually need to do this because I don't use that output, but I'm going to go ahead and change alpha to 0.025. And my output range, I'm going to put right here below my setup. Okay, and here we go. Here's our t-test to sample assuming unequal variances. Let's move this out so we can see it better. All right, so notice sample means sample variances, right? Same things we had up here. Sample mean, sample variances, those are the same. Observations, sample sizes, but look, they did something very different with their degrees of freedom, All right? They got a 66. T stat, negative 3.88. That is the same because it just uses the data that's the same for both. But the p-value is different because it has a different degrees of freedom. The p-value here. which I will highlight, 0 0.000121. That's more accurate. Notice how ours, 0 0.0002, is a little bit bigger, right? That's a little bit bigger because we had a different degrees of freedom. We were being conservative, right? Conservative got a bigger p-value, but it was still small. Here is the actual one using all the specific formulas. So here is our p-value. And again, we see that this is less than alpha, so we get the same conclusion as above. All right, so if you were doing it this way, you still need to give your setup, leave this that says what the output is, don't delete that, so you know you're doing the right test. All your output, you want to identify the p-value and then you're going to do your conclusion the same way you did it up here. So let me go ahead and highlight that. That will be on both. Okay, so you're going to need that as well. I'm going to, yeah, that's good. All right, so that is how you do a t test comparing to independent samples are comparing to independent means. I, you can only use the Excel test here, you'll notice, if you have the original data because we had to input the data. If you only have summary statistics, you would have to do it this way, right? Because then you have to use the formulas if you only have your summary statistics. Notice that the variance is the same thing as the standard deviation squared. So if you only had your standard deviations, you would just simply square the standard deviations to get the variances. So this is how you do a t-test for independent samples, both using formulas and using the data analysis tool, t-test to sample assuming unequal variances. Thank you for watching, and I hope that was useful.